I really wanted to do today was just talk about or speak about mostly how you bridge arms, how you get and how you close down distances. So just to do that, just to give you an insight, we're going to work on how to deal with a punch. That's what you're here to do. But we're going to work with a, a specific punch. We're going to look at dealing with jabs. How to close the range, how to get in and get the arms. And then we're going to look at the opposite side of that, which is how do you get the arms without obviously having to deal with a jab in the first place. So that's going to be the first port of call. So does anyone know the difference between a jab and a straight punch? Yes? No? Yes? You do. What's the difference? Okay, there's lots of different ideas and concepts behind jabs. The reason why you throw them and so on, we're not going to go into because I've got a very short period of time and there's a lot of other instructors that actually do want to teach as well, so obviously I want to give them a good go. So, I'll just give you a general overview. A jab is thrown for many reasons, in boxing generally for range finding, uh, but in this context, what I'm going to do is talk about the difference in the structure, not really the theory behind the jab. The difference in the structure between a straight punch and a jab is that the jab retracts back very, very quickly. A straight punch, straight punch generally tends to be stiff. So in other words, a straight punch generally tends to stay forward. A jab tends to come back quite quickly. So the fundamental difference is that one stays forward and one retracts back, obviously to retract back again and change. The other structure that you need to be aware of in the dynamics of the punch, which is what I'm trying to explain to you, is that a jab generally is at a longer range, so you'll often find a natural curvature of the fist and the shoulder will turn, and therefore you'll give you that range and that extension, combined with the fact that it comes back quickly. It's very different to the way that we punch in range, not necessarily fundamentally different that it's any worse or any better, it's just a different structure. The structure, as you know, in Wing Chun is an upright fist and obviously at a closer, more dynamic range. So it's very, very different in that context. So what I want you to do is just familiarize yourself with a jab and how to deal with the jab, okay? And then what we're going to do is go through some bridging and, and look at some other ideas to deal with counter punches and obviously the follow-up from the jab, which is the most important one. So this is what I want you to do. Your partner is going to stand off opposite you with his hands up, very similar to the way a boxer would punch, and all they're going to do is step in and throw the punch, but corkscrew the arm over, but they're going to try and get the hand back as quick as they can. When they throw the hand forward and they try to get the hand back quickly, I just want you to follow it in, okay? So I want them to do a few where it goes forward and you follow it in, come in, forward and then follow it in, and forward and then follow it in. Then once you've got, a, once you've got the idea of the person doing it static, I then want them to step in, forward and then follow it in. Okay, so you're going to push off your front leg, move back and then move in. Everybody happy with that? Okay, all right, a few little fundamental ideas, okay? I didn't give you a lot of detail, I did that on purpose. I just wanted you to have a go and understand the concept of following the arms, okay? Shadowing the body, that's really fundamentally what I wanted at this stage. Some of you took it a little bit further than I, I've got my eyes on you, some of you, I'm gonna find you a bit later, than I anticipated. So look, the idea is quite simple, one more time. The punch is coming in, you're just trying to judge the distance, ideally staying just away. I don't want you to jump to the side, I want you to slip to the other side, I just want you to move <coughs> fundamentally back, and then obviously in. Okay, that's all. Okay, a lot of you are taking that stage further and moving to the side. Now the problem with moving to the side is, if you've got someone who's punching and then punching again, or punching and punching and then punching again, if you've not checked the other arm, or you haven't stuck to the other arm, in other words, there's this good risk that you might end up going from here, one, slipping, bang, into another punch. So try to stick to the game plan, okay? What I'm actually giving you is quite straightforward in terms of following it back and going forward. There are other ways, but at the moment, that's what I'm asking you to do. So I want you to think about hands now. The idea is quite simple. The person's going to punch, move back, keep your rear guard hand towards the side of your face. So it helps you check the distance, it helps you to understand that. What you've got is two options now. As he comes in, you can ride back and then try to monitor the other arm, okay? Or you can ride back with the arm going back and monitor with the other arm. You've got two options. Now, depending on which one you do, is actually A, down to your experience, time of training and comfort. You might find the guy might punch quite quickly and surprise you, so in which case your ability to react is obviously going to be slowed. But another option is as you ride it back and you're going in, that you're sticking with the other arm and changing the height of the arm that's retracting. So 
Most of the time when people are punching, what you're looking for is that the punch is dropping on the way back down. That obviously means if he goes back and the hand is dropping, that gives you an opportunity one to move in and hit the guy's way. Okay, does that make sense? So what we're looking at is he goes in and I go back and I'm sticking to the rear hand and monitoring the other hand. Can you see that? Everybody happy with that? Try and stick towards the wrist. Try not to be on the end of the hand because what you will, and this is what we're really going to be talking about in my session, the guy that uncouples and punches, the guy that uncouples and punches. So we're looking really for what to do once we've got that situation. So don't go any further. Try to get the first bit correct. And the first bit will be one of two options, just to repeat it. Let's turn around this way so everybody can see. So it'll either be one, okay, when it's here, I stick to the other arm, so I've got two arms extended, okay, so one short, one extended, or one goes back to two, which is the best option, obviously, because I'm smothering his arms. I want you to try both, but we're fundamentally going to work off of this idea here. Questions? Okay, okay. Your partner doesn't necessarily have to push his arm down, it's a little detail I gave you, okay, but generally, watch one you're sticking to. So you've got this scenario here. Yeah? You don't necessarily want to push the arm down because if you do activate the arm, he will more likely come through with that haymaker. So what we're going to do is go through the options from there. There's quite a few things you can do. Fundamentally, you want to hit them as quickly as you can. Why? Sorry? Violence without fighting. That's not a bad answer, actually. I have never heard that one. Okay, generally you want to try to obviously subdue the guy, so in effect, yes. But what you want to be able to do is subdue the guy and obviously preempt the other arm. But we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is go through the options if they're a little bit quicker and a little bit faster than you. So, guys, come in. I've moved, I've gone in, and I've smothered the arm. Okay, so I've got to this scenario. But what's happened is he's locked up. He's, rather than going, oh, I don't like that, bang, oh, I don't like that, bang, he's gone, Way! and tensed his arms. Maybe bent his knees, locked up and tense. So I want you to use a very, very simple idea here. One, you go in, you follow, rotate his frame. Literally, just rotate his frame. Use your elbow to bar him, bang, and turn him. Use your hips as you would do normally. Okay, turn and rotate his body. At the same time, when you rotate, bring the rear guard hand in towards your center. So you mustn't rotate and take both arms away. You rotate and you bring the other arm back. Notice the angle, the elbow sinking, I'm finding an crease of his elbow, pushing it across and rotating. Now look, it's quite simple when someone's strong, he's strong, he's strong in one direction, he's not strong in both directions. So I can turn him, okay? I might struggle pushing him, but I can turn him. So turning's fine, as long as you're turning with your body. From this position, wait, the person that's being turned, wait for a second, and then throw a wide haymaker. Bang. Okay? So as the haymaker comes in, move in to stop the arm. But don't block on the end of the arm. Don't do this. As it comes in, stop and move back and block the arm. Be proactive and try to meet the arm at the source. So when you've rotated, you've turned, you've used long cut, you move in and you stop the arm. From there, one, two, three, whoop, sorry, bang. You can do whatever you want to, bang, bang, to stop the guy. That's up to you. There's all different levels in the school. Go, as he comes in, one, two. It's all different levels here, one. So the follow-ups are up to you, but watch. One small detail. When, when I rotate the arm across, turn with the hips, push with the hips and the elbow into the arm. This hand covers this hand down. Can everybody see that? basically traps it under my body. When he throws the other arm, he has no choice but to throw the other arm, because if he tries to throw that, that's coming in. As I said, it's up to you how you follow up. Strike the throw, hit the body, trap the arm, trap the sweep, turn him, it's up to you. But find something to do, but stop the arm, go in and finish it. Okay, questions? <laughs> I've gone in, I've trapped the arm, okay? He locks his arm. Because he's locked his arm in such a, a, a tight composure, I butt and I turn him, okay, that rotates his body. Now, the point I was making, can you see? This hand covers down inside his wrist, so it traps his arm. Yeah, it traps his arm. 
and that's the most important thing that you want. Okay, to control that arm, make it difficult from time to hook it and punch. Can you see it now? <laughs> okay, guys, have a go. Okay, so <laughs> generally speaking, we've got to this scenario where I've gone in and I followed the arms. Everybody's happy with this, yes? Okay, good. So far, so good. Okay. Now, what, I, what we just did was the guy basically locks up, but the other option is that he doesn't lock up, he throws a punch. So maybe he throws this one first, so he throws the arm around. The obvious is that you stick and follow to the arm. Okay, same concept as we did, he throws a punch, stick and follow. He throws that punch around, stick and follow. So you've now got a scenario where he throws this one, you stick and follow, throws this one, you stick and follow. Everyone happy with that? Now, you're such a bright, large group, and I'm sure that you can do a little bit better than that. So what we're going to do is take it a stage further. So this time he punches, I move in, I follow, I've got the arms. He disengages and throws the arm. We'll go after the lead leg, lead arm. So lead leg, lead leg, sorry, never mind, lead arm. But this time what he does is, where I've stuck to the arm, he decides to use a little bit of power, strength, and drive the arm across. Can you see that? As he drives the arm across, change, laugh, bounce back to the other side. So you've got the same concept as before, making sure that you've turned his back. Watch again. So one, go in and trap, pin the arms, stick to the arms. Keep your own elbows down, don't flare them. Okay, keep your chin down. Why do you keep your chin down? He has got a head, so keep your chin down. It's not a problem. <coughs> Just use it, think about it. But I'm not gonna use mine. From this position, he throws a stick. Okay, as I stick, he pushes the arm across. I'm exaggerating the movement so you can see that. As he pushes the arm, I replace to the outside. Making sure I'm sticking, this is another detail. Okay, I'll turn the angle in a second so you guys can see. I know I've got my back towards you, so you'll see in a second. From this position, lock, track the arm, press it away from you again, and punch behind your own lead arm. Okay, don't punch around it. Keep your center line tight and punch across. Can everybody see that? Okay. <coughs> Lots of angle. Okay. So same thing again. Punches one, I've gone in and trap the arm. He goes around, I stick to the arm. He hits across, I lock, bounce the arm and I hit him again. And it's up to you, one, again, whatever you want to do to break his balance. Hits him, take him down. But either way, what you're looking at, let's go again so these guys can see. Either way, what you're looking at from this position, as he goes, sticking to the arm with your elbow slightly out, pointing downwards, let him be in. Okay, the structure is very different. You want the strength to go from the elbow to the far hip. If your elbow's in, it's going to compromise that. So as he presses across, let it fold. Retract the rear hand, stick. Okay, can we all see that? Do you hit, lock, hit him, bounce the arm past you. Okay, you can bounce him, keep him off you. And ideally, and this is a detail I want you all to remember and try to stick to, you should be looking at the back of his shoulders, not the front of his face. You get the back of the shoulders, it's very difficult for him to hit you. I'm sure you can all see that. If he throws a punch, it's very difficult for him to hit me. Okay, any questions? Happy? Did you guys see it? Okay, here we go back from what I saw watching some of you, I didn't get a chance to see all of you, but just some small details really, and I'm holding the mic. <laughs> One arm, two. Yeah, maybe I should. But I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me put it in. <laughs> I'll give you. <laughs> okay. A couple of things. You all got the, the, the basic idea well, so that was fine. I was quite happy with that. This really is fundamentally down to uh, your own interpretation of how you're going to stick. I mean, there's lots of things you should and shouldn't do, where you should be on the arm, whether you're on the back of the hand, whether you're on the wrist, what you should be doing, thinking about their elbow, because most of their movement is going to come from their elbow joint, yeah? Their elbow and their shoulder. So that's really fundamentally where you want to be thinking of. Now, a couple of things. Some of you, when you were doing this, and he's going around, are going, might be going a little bit too deep on the arm. Okay, just consider that as well as an option, because the way he presses is going to be completely different than when I'm slightly towards the center of the forearm. So that's an important point for you. And that, again, is very different from being on the wrist. I don't 
really want to be on the wrist because it's quite easy for him to change his direction. But I want to be <coughs> towards the elbow, quite deep, but not on the elbow. Yeah, not on the elbow joint because he can still bend his arm. He's unlikely to catch me, but he's just more likely going to be more awkward to deal with. Okay? And my follow-up's going to be different as a result of that. I have to roll and to change the angle, bang, and start to move him. And, and that's really not what I want to do at the moment. I want to try and keep it quite easy, keep the guy off of me. So we're in this position. He's gone around. I've stuck to the arm. Now, when he pressures this arm, is going to come on the inside, but I'm going to ride. I'm going to ride it, ride it, ride it, and change, ride it and change. I'm not letting him push and then trying to recover this arm and then bring it to the outside. If I do that, I'm really am gambling with my own movement. What I'm doing is letting him be strong, riding it and changing. So I'm taking that. So if anything, I'm accelerating his movement across. As I accelerate, I change my position, which gives me my lap. This, as always, is a range finder. It's not a power strike. It gives me the range for this, which is where the power, the beat punch, is going to come from. So don't get too fixated with hitting the guy with that. Hit him, bounce the arm, and take the arm across. And this was, again, some of you got this right. I was really pleased with that. But to emphasize the fact that he turns his body, take the arm away from you. Don't pull the arm into you. If you pull the arm into you, you will likely to straighten up, and then you've got the other arm coming in, and that's what you don't want. You want to try to isolate one side of his body, give you an escape route to the outside. If you want to follow up, hit the guy, do whatever you want to do, use your legs, sweep, knee. You've got those options, but you mustn't keep him square in front of you where he's going to be stronger. Okay, you turn him sideways, put him at a disadvantage. Questions? Okay, I'm going to hand you over to Sifu Nick. Okay, Nick's going to take over. Okay.